In this video, I'd like to talk about Maya's user interface. Maya has an excellent, powerful user interface. Each user can access different operating modes and customize the user interface so that it perfectly supports him in his daily work. Besides the main window, Maya has all sorts of editors, info and settings windows and a freely placeable window is a great thing because it gives the user the freedom to place it wherever he can use it best. However, free windows always hide some information from the windows below them, for example the camera panel, the outliner, etc. An important help for organizing the many windows, panels and editors in Maya are the workspaces. A workspace defines where and how the windows are arranged and fitted in the main window, or where free windows are located. All elements that show such a double dotted line, but also these tabs can be torn off, making them free windows. These windows can now be docked again at certain places wherever the window becomes transparent and such a blue line is visible. Such a workspace is saved automatically, but not permanently. I can also assign a new name. Each new workspace is saved as a file in the preferences. Workspaces that have not yet been overwritten, as well as the default workspaces, can be restored. Individual parts of the user interface can be turned on and off, even if they are not windows. The main menu bar, for example, the panel menu bar, the panel icon bar can all be turned on and off with Ctrl M, Shift M and Shift Ctrl M respectively. The switches for this can be found in the preferences. More on off switches can be found here in the preferences. Of course, it's a bit inconvenient to always open the preferences for something like this. That really backs for a shortcut. And well, the hotkeys for the menu bars are already those shortcuts and there are even more possibilities. A prominent feature in Maya's user interface is the hotbox. When I hold the spacebar, the hotbox appears where the mouse is. The hotbox shows me all pull-down menu bars. The main menu bar, modeling, rigging, animation, dynamics, rendering and the panel menus. In addition, there are five regions where so-called marking menus are displayed. You can hide the menu bars to concentrate on individual workflows, for example modeling. You can also turn off the menu bars altogether and allow only the five zones. Or you can focus on the zone in the center. The marking menus in the five zones can be customized to your needs. The marking menu in the center switches between the different cameras. This is actually the fastest way to switch cameras in Maya. The marking menu in the north, above the hotbox, was traditionally used for panel layouts. However, I made myself a marking menu for my frequently used workspaces. The marking menu in the west, on the left, was meant for different pick masks. I installed here a marking menu for often used windows. On the right side, in the east, is a marking menu with which I can toggle individual components of the user interface. You remember the settings in the preferences? So here we find them again. The marking menus can be created and edited in the marking menu editor window. You can create new entries by drag and drop from the shelf or from the script editor. All marking menus can be used not only in the hotbox but also on any hotkey. In addition to the hotbox, the shelf can also be used to adapt your own workflow. In the shelf menu, you can create a new empty shelf. Functions from the pull-down menus can be added to the shelf with shift and control and click. And in most cases, they already have a description and an icon. Mel and Python scripts from the script editor can be marked and dragged and dropped with the middle mouse button onto the shelf. Here it is recommended to add a description and a shortcut and an icon in the shelf editor. The definitions of the shelves are Mel scripts which can be found in the preferences. With the function load shelf you can import such a file into existing preferences. 
In Maya, there are already a lot of predefined hotkeys, but you can completely customize them to your needs. The hotkey editor shows me which keys are already assigned. If I hold down a modifier, shift, control, or alt, or combinations, I can see which keys are already assigned. I can also search for functions that are in the pull-down menus or by the function name. Assigning a function to a hotkey is super simple. Enter the key here and you're done. And for all of you who are worried about overwriting the system hotkeys, the system settings are read-only. New hotkeys can be edited in sets which are just copies of the system settings. With the large number of entries in the pull-down menus, it is sometimes difficult to find a specific function. For these cases, there is the search function. You would think that this function is a matter of course, but the search function does much more than just search for keywords. I start the search function with Control F, and then the input field appears at the mouse position. If I know the name of a function, I can find it quickly. While I'm typing the term, results are already being displayed. I can select functions immediately, make them favorites, and call their help page. The search does not only show direct hits for the search term, but also synonyms. For example, if I search for the word box, I will of course find terms like toolbox and channel box, but also the command to create a cube. These were only the most important elements of the Maya user interface. There are many more tricks that you can use to customize Maya to your needs.